So tonight's tonight's um, hearing is in regards to a conservation district use application is for a single family residence. I think it's called the Helios project. And the, uh, uh, the area of, um, of interest today is uh, at Princeville, across the street from the fire station. There's some, um, they've been kind enough to ship, uh, bring some, uh, some ground photographs and some aerial photographs of the site. Yeah, Jenny Bell's gonna come on in. I'm a traditional religious practitioner. You can stand your suit with those. Okay, yeah, well, it might take a couple long, so. Uh, could, uh, Hello, everybody. Hello, honey. Could you keep it to five minutes? No, I'm taking my time. Okay. okay. Well, you have to understand. It's protocol, yeah? Nice and loud, Kaimi. Okay. It's protocol. You guys got to understand that. You can shake my hand now. I'll tell you, it's just serious. I'm not going to be showing up for nothing if it's not serious. I just came from people who are possessed because of things that happen like this. Children, the seizures, because you guys don't understand, okay? Got you it. Just shake your hand. Got it. And you felt it. Got it. You I guess you, you better have get it. Please. So going along, I'm against this project. First, I'm a Konohiki of Halelea. You guys are obligated under Section 106 to contact me. I no phone calls, nothing. Section 106, is this a Section 106 matter? Is this um, a Section 106 meeting? This? Yeah. Uh, don't say nothing. Don't spill the beans. Um, <laughs> no, this is not a section. Okay. So in, in, anywhere it involves federally funded, you know, areas and federal zoning, where there's any Native Hawaiian NHOs, it involves a section 106. So you guys have to, by law, enter a consultation process with the section 106 with the NHOs of the area. It's a 6C process. Do you guys know that? Did you guys know that was a 6C process? No. Okay. I'm coming in with law, okay? You guys can get you guys can get subpoenaed to court for this. I'm actually doing you guys a favor, yeah? I'm not, you know, I have it really under control, actually. But yeah, we're totally against this project. One, it's a sacred site. Okay. Two, as navigators and celestial practitioners, you know, it's a sacred area to us that we have been tending and protecting for many years. And our families also have been involved, all of us inside this community. We have done many work and sacrificed our blood, sweat, and tears. And this is serious. So no, we do not want this project. There's burials there. There's ancient things in there, artifacts. That's why you guys don't belong in there, because you guys don't know what to do with it. And you guys don't, you know, I'm not just directing right to you, but I know you guys are convenient, so just, you know, bear with me. Okay? I understand. There's caves, a lot of artifacts, so it's a very sacred place of our families and celestial navigators from the times of before. <laughs> a lot of history into our people. Okay? And it's all being lost. And this knowledge is what's supposed to prevail the world to survive, okay? The knowledge of the families that protect, protect and pertain to the, to the caretaking of these places. One, if you really want to go there, you guys want to build this thing, okay? It's a sacrifice, hey all, hello. Like I said, I'm doing you guys a favor coming in. I deal with this shit all the time. Dealing with exorcism from little kids, from men who get brain seizures and all. I just did it for my auntie, in Wailua. You know, you guys got to understand the spiritual side of it, okay? To protect you guys, okay? Night marchers walk through there, and it's a very ancient place of many different periods of time that came in the history of Hanalei. And no, we do not want the project. Because why? It interferes with the protocol that we're in, that you guys don't know about, okay? And it, right now is that time. It's the time we, which in our religion, as a traditional religious practitioner for the state that you guys are supposed to contact me, but nobody contact me. And others that are here, and community members that by law, under Section 106, there's a handbook, Native Hawaiian consultation, that I'm entering you guys in to, along with other people who are voluntarily who wants to do it also in the community. Okay? You guys are entering a Section 106 consultation with the Konohikis of Hawaii. Okay? It's going to take a process. You guys ain't going to go along right now as a halt. We can put a cease and desist order. I served Jen Fields many times before and he's still paying off Hawaiians, you know, our own family that we got to go against because of money. Then who benefits at the end? One house that nobody can live in and redo the whole zoning and the birds, everything, everybody come in and move? Why do we want to look out over there in the first place? 
so everybody from not here can go look and see what they want and purchase it when we cannot. Mm. Hello. Feel this energy now. Okay? Usually I'm not talking like this. I'm telling you. I just deal with some really heavy shit that involves that place. Like moving stones and bones. And excuse me for my intense energy. It's just the, kind of like I said, this is the period of cool. I never said that, but I was supposed to tell you. But in the future, I will. I just did. So, getting back to it, it's a time of coup, okay? It's the energy of confrontation, pro appropriate confrontation. Where we not can stand this kind of stuff you guys put in on us, it's heaviness. Like my cousin said, we've been here all our lives, and our kupunas worked for this a long time. My family just alone has been here over 10,000 years. Where the hell are you guys from? Why are you guys leading the meeting? Like I said, there's a protocol here. There's Ali'is over here, there's raw bloodlines on this land. Feel me. Let you feel this real thing, yeah? Away he. Yeah. Funny, yeah? Funny. Funny when you go home and if you go and act like that, watch what's going to come. It's not going to come from under the doors, between the trees, or within the shadows of yourself in the mirror. No, it does not. Because why? Because we still go there and taking care of you guys and giving you guys an aloha. But no, you guys take and you guys still don't know that. So I'm telling you right now. Be very careful. Mahalo for your time. Aloha. Section 106 meeting. Entering section 106. Let me Hello, my Hello, my My name is Moku Tule Chang. against the surprise, I'm totally against the <laughs> development of this region. For many different reasons, as all my Ohana here has explained to you guys very in plain English. The Ohanas don't want this. It's not going to benefit the Ohana. Not the community, none of the keiki, nothing, nothing, it's not going to happen. It can't happen. It's too sacred of a place to do that. This is too sacred of an island for us to let that happen. Mahalo for your time. Here we had Pu'oku Heiau in the Halilea district. This is on, located on Kapaka Road. I'm Kaimi Hermosur. For those of you who don't know, I'm a Tribal Historic Preservation Officer, Konohiki, the district of Moku of Halilea here on the island of Kauai. This is a Section 106 sign that's been posted by, by the families and the members of the Section 106 and Ohana's of the Konohikis of Hawaii, the Halilea District, where we first erected this sign up when we first started cleaning this place a little over five years ago. And we always replaced the sign. So this is also the example of the sign which is a consultation with Native Hawaiian organizations in the Section 106 involving uh, sacred sites, cultural sites that's unique to families of Hawaii, especially this one, Po'oku uh, This was erected uh, undergoing a Section 106 consultation and uh, notification from the THPOs of this area, notifying uh, Jim Fields, who so-called bought and acquired the land with the state and county of Hawaii, uh, this land was related rezoned so they're able to uh, CPR the land and divide it up into different separate properties and eventually sell some and uh, develop the areas as well. As you can see, these rock walls aren't from here, they're from other places from Kauai. These ones are originally here. This here is a letter of notification informing Mr. Jim Fields. That we were entering him in a section 106 consultation with the tribal historic preservation officers of Kauai and that was CC to Patrick Porter who is the DLNR official in charge of forestry and also CC to a president of the section 106 Hawaiian consultation here in Kauai Mr. Ed Kaivi tribal historic preservation officer Kahuna Konohiki Mineral Rights and we're gonna go see some desecration that has occurred up here and and document a little, uh, document some de desecration that's been going on and the interruption of a section 106 agreement 
which we are under a memorandum of agreements and understandings with the rest of the federal agencies along with members of participating parties. It was here 200 years ago. This is a navigational heiau dedicated to the solstice and this, is, this, this uh, heiau is dedicated to the god Ku of war. As you guys can see, if you look at the stones, this was the last of the remainings of the walls. And that's why we were told by the archeologist, state of Hawaii, Nancy McMahon, when we had our meeting with everyone, we're not supposed to work over here. But you can see there's no different markings. There's green and red, so that indicates that they hit certain things, or they're trying to mark off certain things. But it's obvious that they came here, through here, with a machine, and came and grabbed up all these rocks because they're all flipped over. They're all red and brown of color, and the dirt, on the dirt. They've been uprooted, these pohaku, these stones. If they weren't disturbed, they'd be all black and all wonderful like these guys. But some of these ancient stones weren't supposed to be moved. Like if you see over here, if you see over here, you'll see the scars and the damages on the stones. That indicates that they're scraping it with some kind of machine, like an excavator. So we're gonna need to know who the people are working here and when they're working here and what the company and who they are and what kind of machinery that they're using under the section 106 laws. Why are the stones important? And as you can see, it's just all over here, this is all loose dirt here. Yeah. This is all loose dirt from the machine that came in and ran through here and you can kind of see this, the track still. But you can see the big scar on this sacred Bohaku. Probably a birthstone of some sort that was made by the machine and all the other pohakos that are piled up. The last of this hail. Desecration right here. War crimes. A lot of artifacts here. This was the last of the Hau Grove. This big Hau was protecting the stone walls under here. As you can see, they cut all the Hau and then they piled up all these stones and pushed it with the machines. Look at all these stones, they all came from underground. They're all brown and they're all scarred by the machines. And they're all out of place. The park, both Nepali and Haena, are, they're a mess, right? I mean, the water line got blown out. The, the river crossing is gone in an eight foot section. So we don't have toilets that work. We don't have drinking water. We have a septic system that doesn't work. Uh, the parking lot that was just put in, you know, as an interim measure was virtually completely washed away. Uh, the beach was eroded immensely, which is a problem area that we've known about. Um, you know, we had Evie exposed and, um, but through it all, the most amazing thing, the, the thing about the time frame for the, the larger construction is we would normally spend, you know, I'm not kidding, a couple of years in a design phase and contracts and going back and forth to design the types of improvements, you know, that are going to amount to millions of dollars. We designed these improvements over a weekend for the purposes of bidding. Now. They are not like completely ready, spec'd, ready to build. So this contract is in effect a design build. We have to do a topo right right now. So they're actually serving, surveying right now the topo because they don't know how much material they have to bring in. Right? right now, we're literally tweaking the design. So for example, it might look one way on paper. That's the way we have it in the master plan. But you know, as it moves Makai to move out of this rockfall zone, there's archaeological sites there. So 
I was tromping through the bushes today with the surveyors, you know, because we're not going to let the parking lot damage any archaeology. And already I can tell we're going to have to redesign it a little bit because it's too far from Makai. So there's a design phase that has to happen. It has to happen rapidly. We need to be nimble and protective of the really important things there and not get caught up in doing it too fast. Like I said, we're racing the DOT. We're hoping to have things completed by November, which would be the restored parking area under the proclamation. Over there. What's that? What's going to happen to our family's green yards? The green yards? Yeah. I don't know. Um, you know, we had EV exposed. And, um, but through it all, the most amazing thing. I don't know. Right now. That's not in your master plan. No, no, right now we're just focusing on just the parking area. We're not going to hit over into the archaeological sites in the shrubs there. It's going to be... What's that? The cars are going to park on our family, our ancestors' graveyards. Only in this, where the parking lot was before. Okay, we'll have to, you and I have to talk after about that because, you know, I mean, we... we well, why don't we talk to everybody? This is what the meeting's for. Well, because other people want to hear some other stuff. I would love to talk to you after about the parking area itself. But that's where the, the, the gravel's going to go down and we have to try to put in a turnaround okay. in order to deal with shuttles. Because I know that there's a lot of members of the community that are interested in trying to... So good evening, everybody. Uh, again, my name is Larry Dill. I'm the district engineer for the Island of Kauai for State Highways. I'm here with our deputy director, Ed Sniffen. We also have some of our consultants here tonight, so I ask, as we said before, to do what you can to hold your questions, and we'll talk with you and answer all your questions as best we can with the time we have allowed to us tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. I will mention also, uh, if and when we get into the bridge work, which is the plan to do right now, at the end of that phase, uh, in order to complete each of the bridges, we'll have to do a, a weekend closure. I'll, I'll get to the bridges in a minute, please. But I'm just saying, for the convoys... Okay, so for the convoys, we're going to do a weekend closure. Which is mean that we're going to do a convoy on Saturday morning, and the next one wouldn't be till Sunday evening. But we will provide more situations. Okay, so what we're going to provide in those situations is a, a shuttle and a ferry system. So that there'll be a park and ride set up. Okay, um, let, let's, let's have him present his information and then the concerns we can go for him. Okay, thank you. There will be a park and ride set up at either end of the zone so that you can pick, be picked up by a shuttle, take it to the bridge under construction, Ferried across the stream, where another shuttle will take you to a park and ride on the far side. We're going to try to limit the weekend closures to as little as three, but there may be as many as six. Okay. Now I would like to talk about the bridges. Same capacity as the Honolulu Bridge. This is down the road. 
So the Wyoming bridge is going to stay in the exact same place, the exact same configuration, the exact same size it currently is. So essentially no changes to the Wyoming bridge configuration, shape, size, location. Looks like you're building a pad right next to it. Looks like you're adding on another bridge or a double bridge. So the, pad, the pad next to it is to support a crane so we need to lift some of the materials there while we're like that. So that I'll be gone away when it's done. Okay. Uh, I would like to mention the other two bridges and, and the whole reason that we're looking at those. In order to complete the work that's down the highway, we need to, at the completion of those road repair locations, in order to stabilize the slope of the slopes, we need to bring in large boulders. Two to three ton boulders. In order to manipulate the boulders, manage the boulders, Okay, so in order to complete this quarter of a down the slope, two we need to bring years. heavy equipment and loads of boulders out there. So what we're looking at is building bridges that will be able to keep the existing bridges in place and in service for almost the entire length of the project, which would mean we wouldn't have to put in a temporary bridge and have all of the issues accommodated associated with a temporary bridge. So because the plan for those bridges, we're going to be just outside, immediately outside the existing bridge, which would make them wider than the existing bridges. But the reason for that is because we're going to build them right outside. But they're going to be one lane bridges. They're going to be 18 feet between the walls. For your frame of reference, the bridge that's right by the Hanalei Kanu Resort is 18 feet between the walls. So we're going to build bridges that will be 18 feet wide between the walls. And we're going to put in a 2 foot wide, 12 inch curve on either side. So the travel way is only going to be 14 feet. So they are going to be one lane bridges. So that is the proposal on the table right now for discussion. Where we look at other options as hard as we can. We looked at barging and materials and equipment. I spoke to the barge operator. You may know the Robinson family that operates the barge that's owned by the Navy. And I asked him about possible use of the barge. It does have a very large weight capacity, but it's going into dry dock September 7th. He says it's supposed to come out first week of November, but he says it never comes out when they say it's going to come out. And he says between November and May, the surf will prevent him from getting into the beach anyway on the North Shore. So unfortunately, that is not an option. There you go. So, so we are looking at all the options, and when we break out, I'd be happy to entertain all your questions after the mission ends. Okay, thank you. Even though you know, you think you know, you should have come here and asked. What do you guys think? What would you guys like? Not this is what we're doing. That is what I'm sharing with you is what the current proposal is after a lot of input from the community and discussion. We're going to break out and I want to hear your input to that proposal. Okay? That's why we're out here to listen to you and to hear you and do our best we can for you. Thank you. really quickly and then we're going to break out. I think we're going to keep DOT here, okay? Before everybody, before everybody go up into the different sections, I'd like to share some vital information. Aloha, everybody. Aloha. 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 How are you guys today? My kai. Well, Patton 6642, why niya? 4885, Royal Captain, Konohiki. Hi. Mahalo. Yeah. Okay. Don't get to this. We don't belong over here doing this. Because we already had asked them for a consultation process. You guys had ignore us. You guys was very rude to Auntie Louise and our representatives of our Native Hawaiian families. And by law, you guys are obligated to follow these things. Larry Dill, who's been trying to contact you, all this kind of stuff. Sarah Adams, all these, everybody. Yeah, you guys ignore us on this Hawaiian, on Native Hawaiian consultation process. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm calling Yiki member of our families. Why are we here? If I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to bust out my badge to show how, as a tribal historic preservation officer, ACHP. Huh? You got the document bro. So, you yeah, start from the beginning. The I'll start from the beginning. Okay. Because after the flood, there was many monies that came in, yeah? Many, many. many monies came in. And just like you guys, let you guys know, a lot of our people, all of us is still suffering. And the, the priority is not the breaches, but anything you guys can go after is what 
our priority, what our needs are. And you, if you guys are our delegates, our county members, and everybody, whoever else is, this should be you guys' priority. Right? So the first thing we're gonna talk about. Number one. Everybody can go look this up. Felicia, you know this real well, yeah? It's called the Native Hawaiian Consultation Process. The section 106, which you guys had ignored. Huh? Here it is, right up there. Yeah, and it tells. Everybody go home, go do you guys' research, yeah? I'm gonna show you guys this information, these documents. They're supposed to consult with us before even getting any money or even doing research. Forget any of these findings of what they're doing on, top of the, on our lands. But you guys just coming over here, you guys getting paid. Huh? Wait, yeah, it gets better, and it, and it clearly states, clearly states in here. We're supposed to have a, a Native Hawaiian consultation process and members of the community, which is all of us, prior to getting any funding or any plans or any kind of uh, consultation and or any proposed projects. But like, you know, it looks like they already get their, their projects already uh, handled already and what they like present to us. They're not negotiating with us, they're not consulting with us there. Bypassing this process right here, and, and then it's a violation of federal law. Just to let you guys know, we have a team that is looking at these things too, okay? Okay, that's this one. There's a section 106. Then you get the Tribal Historic Preservation Act, which is which is all of us, our families are protected under this act. There's 78, 78 agencies, federal agencies, state, county. And you guys have been served many times since this is orders. That's two. Okay? And of course, you have the Wailua case study. Okay, everybody, Wailua case study, yeah? Wailua case study. That is Wailua, it's not Hyena. No, it has to do with the family, Shelby. No, yeah, it's Hyena. Oh, you guys gotta listen, no. Do you guys know what you guys are talking about? I'm trying to share this on behalf of the families. Oh, whatever. Wait, no people no, looking. Relax. It's an advisory council. Advisory council. Advisory council is all the family members who have, who have to have consultation before they go out. Let me talk. Let me talk. Look. Look. Let you guys know. Let you guys know that they're not following the process. Okay. The U.S. Department of Defense, okay, that protects our interests, protects our interests. Let me tell. Let me tell. We we had try scheduling with the families and they ignored us. Who's still on the mic? Who's still on the mic? In closing, these are laws that they're supposed to follow, okay? Yeah. Federal laws. They're supposed to negotiate with us first, okay? Yeah. That's all. In closing. The families first. But who's with the families first? And that's all. These are laws. Go ahead and do you guys research. You guys homework. Mahalo. Okay, one thing. I, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry if we have ever offended, hurt, and violated. But as you can see, 95% of the Hawaiians were killed. So this is the last of the last. The last of the last. Okay. So the first thing we gotta realize, first thing we gotta realize is not one dollar was paid to our Hawaiians and our men who worked on that road. Not one dollar from the beginning. So before we talk about the bridges, Larry, before we talk about the bridges, we better talk about the mountain. 
Because the mountain is going to come down again. Yeah. Or the volcano is going to come again. Or we're going to have a tidal wave. Yeah. So you either can be Pono or you can be out. Be Pono. Be Pono. Be Pono. We are Pono. Okay? So let's talk about when you will pay our workers. Okay? So when you come up, you tell them. This is the way we will pay you because you guys kill yourself, you broke your machines, you broke your ropes, you broke your back from the beginning, not one dollar came yet. So before you go, bridges, what, five million, ten million, twenty million? What's the bridge? Fucking. What's the budget on the bridge? Okay, how about one million to the workers of work done? That might help the next discussion. So, okay. 
Okay, right now, for the plan, if we go forward with it, with replacement of the bridges, we're talking about weekend closures. So I'm trying not to get into a whole lot of detail, but in order to, to build the bridges, we're going to build the parapet walls immediately outside the existing bridges. And then when it comes time to finish it, we have to come back and put precast planks in order to create the deck. That's when we're be closing the bridge and completing the work. No, uh, no, no, no. We're only going to have. That's what you just said. The five years. The five years are we don't go with the permanent option right now. If we go with the temporary option right now, you'll have it for five years. The temporary option will be there for five years. I totally agree. Not going to be temporary. No, this is something we're going to disagree on. This is something we're going to disagree on. Those bridges have to be replaced. Those bridges are in poor condition. Right now, if, two, Why? if we don't, oh. if we don't do something now, it's gonna be just like Wainia. So we 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 this is a hundred-year-old bridge. Bridges are built with life cycles. This one hit their life cycle. It's a, it's a hundred-year-old bridge. Historical. So the three bridges in Wainia, the three bridges are in Wainia, are an example of that. Those three bridges that we dropped the three acros on, an example of the situation. The last thing we want to do is have these bridges falling apart. We got to rip them up, impact the community again, and drop in acro bridges. That's the last thing. Is that what you do? We, it's our job to ensure we took it the, the condition of the bridges. And this is the top, two of the top four bridges in the state that we got to take care of. From the overall perspective, again, I totally understand the concern. Totally understand the concern. My job is to make sure the system is continuous. That everybody who drives on it can be safe. That's what the system is. Why the system? The system is the roads. It has to be continuous. You gotta be able to get in. If the roads, if the bridges are not there, if the bridges are not there, there is no system. So the overall intention is to make sure that we keep this roadway safe. To make sure that we address these road, these bridges when we should. These bridges were already in the process. We were already in the process of consulting on the bridges for a future project. But because of this emergency situation, it makes total sense to do it right now. Total sense to ensure that we would be helping the recovery process. Not just for the roads. We can't even get big trucks up for the waste that's out here. It's going to help the county recover as well. It's going to help DOE get the kids to school. This is for the whole community. For the whole community. Absolutely. It's absolutely. This is absolutely. This is the whole thing. We're looking at everyone. Hey, again, again, we're going to agree to disagree right now because I disagree with you. These bridges need to be done. This is why we're moving forward to propose this to the federal government, who is looking at it with ACHP. We went through the process, we went through the 106 process on this, and we made sure that we followed suit because we need to do that to, to account for federal funds. Now, we could just do that. We could have just used the state emergency money. If we did that, the Women's Proclamation says we don't even do nothing. Back to a normal life, back to. That's only six months. 
plan is they're going to widen the bridges to bring the buses down so they can start charging tourists at the toll booth. It's going to be a little, it's going to be like Hanauma Bay for tourists. And us Hawaiians, us Kanakas, we're not going to get to do our cultural practices in our own home, in our own land. Now our, our, our ancestors are buried there. They don't care. They're just going to fucking build right over them. That's what I have to say. And I'm not for that shit. I'm over it. Done with that shit. Exactly. That's what it is. Do you, do you have anything you want to say? I don't know. Huh? Love you. I just think what I want to say is I don't think this well, is. Well, I know. Everyone right, right, has right. to just get more educated right. about what's because really going on, what the status is of Hawaii, it works. and that's our, the way they can. It's not given rights. And they, they build something. And, oh, it works. You know, it's, it's learning the law. It's a functional bridge. And now they're gonna bring it to a tour bus start. For the massive I, that's, that's what it seems because a lot of that, people and then get they're the, gonna put a tour booth. have the heart somewhere over there. They got the people mm, money. They might let some us. Some of them have the know-how, but always, right now it's it's gotta be like a kill cool on the land. Respect. We're just caregivers of the land. And I'll kind of like a respectful, like, like seeing eye to eye, Been everybody, whether you're bloodline or you're not. Before. We all live here, here. we all love this place just as much so, as what they someone who's been here like, for, you know, forever. I'm over it. I'm done. Our lineage has been here forever. I'm 25th generation. Yeah. And that's the only way we're going to see results. True results. We don't have to have a meeting with the DOT and the government. We never did. And the most important meetings, I believe, too fast. because I've been to so many meetings my in my life. Not be for is and the meetings it. within the families and the our family barrel, Because that's our when land. things get really it's not gonna happen. happen. Within, within us, within the families, within the community. The way it is. The way it is. Hello, I'm, my name is Kaimi Masura. I represent the, the Konohiki families and their family members and Ohana and loved ones of Wainiha and Hayana and Halelea. Uh, pretty much, this is a meeting that we had with DOT and some of the other uh, uh, council members and uh, government, government, uh, you know, representatives on different areas, especially uh, the Department of Transportation, as going about some of the issues, especially. Uh, but my concern was that they didn't complete a Section 106 undertaking that they're supposed to follow through uh, Section 106 consultation process with the Native Hawaiian families and members of this area. And most of all, we had a. We've been informing them and we had representatives of the families that showed up at the consultation and they were pretty much, uh, uh, you know, like weren't taken seriously and so somewhat mocked of and, and then uh, they, they, you know, before, prior to going having funding and everything, you're supposed to have consultation with the Native Hawaiian families as states in the law and the handbook of the Section 106 Native Hawaiian uh, uh, process, consultation process, but they are bypassing that. <laughs> And pretty much like coming up with to the community with their proposed plan that they already created, which is a violation of federal laws. So these are some of the concerns that we have before they go and uh, plan and have their uh, proposed projects and create all these projects that they spend a lot of the money and time on. They're supposed to be uh, addressing uh, the Native Hawaiian consultation and members before the, those what, actions. What would you have them do right now? What right, would you right, want now, them to do? right now, you know, you know, you know they'll have to go back to their process because they haven't completed that process, and uh, that would allow the Native Hawaiian families to put in their input, which would allow them the rightful and you know being a uh, environmentally friendly and also like go through the right steps lawfully to complete this process. So mahalo.